Okay. Hey guys. Hi. Welcome. Welcome you uh you sickos. Sup. Hi sickos. Welcome to episode 14 unlucky in any country. Is it though? Why? I don't, I don't know. I just made that up. <laughs> lucky number 14. it just doesn't strike me as a good number i don't know it's a fortnight this is our fortnight episode <laughs> okay all right yeah. yeah but anyway that's sick this is that sick and i'm your host jb short for jazzy butts <laughs> is that what it's short for this week this week yeah i'm a okay. jazzy butt cool i'm justine i'm heather hi and i'm your host this week and i don't know what heather and justine have in for me I love how we we every week we're like whoever is doing it we're like let's we have to collude. Yeah, I'm hosting the show, but I don't know what it's about. Yeah, that's the official phrase that we've come up with. We yeah, collude. we collude with each other. Yeah, so. it's, it's always so very covert. We're like we can't tell JB. We can't. Tell I tried to get it out of Justine. All she knows you is did. that whatever I was researching at the airport last night on my way home from Orlando, uh, I just kept telling my coworkers, "This is so gross. This is so gross. This is so gross." And they're like, "We don't want to hear about." It. well that's perfect so, yeah. you bitches can't gross me out i don't believe in it um Think we're we gonna might. try all right yeah. all right but before we get sick nasty well i guess we're still gonna be sick nasty no oh, what yeah. uh what uh gross what's your sickest thing in a bad way sickest thing of the week in a bad way so i feel like for me all of a sudden it was when we were just watching um <laughs> we were watching Beachella right before this and Beachella and the and the 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 one dancer dude that like basically dislocates its fucking shoulders. Ah! He's double jointed and like yes it's very he's very like talented and a good dancer but it was extremely disturbing and I don't like it when he does that. No, I fucking hate it. It was no. it was disgusting. No one should be able to do eagle pose behind your back. That was that was Ugh. it was wrong. And at the same time, I was at my mother's house putting her dislocated shoulder back into her How arm. How ironic. Yeah, you had, an actu- coincidental. you had an actual know. dislocated shoulder to yeah. contend with. Maybe you should have uh, made your mom do that before you put it back in place. Sorry for calling it out, mom, but, you know, I fixed you. I don't think I'm, your mom's I'm, listening. I'm so glad you're, you're better. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's gross. Yeah. Well. Um, I love Beachella though. I love Beyonce. It's Be- Beachella is yeah, Homecoming on Netflix. I don't know if you watched it, but where are you living? If you have not, it's so good. Just watch it now. Ugh. <laughs> so I have a sickest thing of the week in a bad way. Yeah, please and tell. It's something that just uh, I was told about yesterday. So the Virgo upstairs revealed to me that he read Gerald's Game by Stephen King when he was nine years old. Have you guys ever heard of Gerald's Game? I have, but I don't know what, what the dealio yeah, is. Yeah, I don't remember what it was about. It's a super creepy, sick, disturbing book. Like, Stephen King, you're a sick motherfucker. He is. <laughs> he is a sick motherfucker. He is. He I, is. He is a maniac. I don't know. I don't know if I was nine when I was reading Stephen King. I mean, I read a lot of Stephen King at a probably too young age. James. Yeah. yeah. I did not. Because I, I was sheltered. I was still watching My Little Pony. Wait, so what's what's <laughs> Gerald's game about? So Gerald's game. Oh my god, it's so creepy. It's about a woman who, okay, she accidentally kicks her husband in the nuts to death during like this kinky sex capade and like she's in <laughs> yes, and she's in hand. He's 9 years old and he's doing this. She's in handcuffs and he dies on top of her like <clears throat> like dies. He she accidentally kicks him in the nuts. He dies on top of her, and then she proceeds to have like these visions, these flashback type visions, like from her her like earlier life, and um, it reveals like I don't know, yada yada yada. She was sexually assaulted. There's all kinds of like terrible things, you know. Stephen King, use your imagination, what have you. And I'm like, oh my god, this is so disturbing. I can't believe you read this when you were nine. But yeah, he read a lot of books. Yeah. That was his his escape. He was he was a big reader when he was a kid. And now he reads a shit ton. Yeah, that sounds like not something a nine year old should be reading. Yeah, probably. I was like, I was appalled. I was, app- I was like, that is sick. I'm using that for, you know, that's sick because like it's so disgusting that you were nine years old and you were reading about this like disturbing 
you know, like, guy got kicked in the balls and he died. Rochambeau to death. Yes. Okay. When he first was telling me about it, that's what I thought. I was like, he's like, yeah, when I was nine, I read this book, of, like, about this guy who died from getting kicked in the balls. And I was like, okay, picturing Rochambeau. I was picturing it was like a contest between two guys being stupid bears and kicking each other in, in yeah, Rochambeau, kicking each other in the nuts. But no, it was even worse. It was even worse. It was like his wife and she accidentally did it and then he died on top of of her it's just like how horrifying is that i didn't Pretty. know you could die from being kicked in the nuts yeah, can i think you? he like had a heart attack oh um, yeah it triggered something else that happened in him oh i actually have a, a a gross thing of my own oh yeah yes my my dear friend and sister-in-law uh ham sandwich uh-huh or ann as the man calls her. I love Hammy. I do. She's the best. And she recently started listening to our podcast. She'd been putting it off, but she started listening to it. Hi, Anne. Hi, Hi Anne. I love you. You're my favorite. And and she's had all kinds of feedback. But one of the she wants to participate because you know Anne's gross. Anne's totally gross. Uh huh. Love her. So she was on a trip to. I think this was when she was in D.C. or she was in Colorado for a wedding last week. I'm not sure exactly. She was in an airport at some point. And she's like, oh, I have something for you. And then she just sends me. Well, she doesn't just. She's like, do you want a picture of my placenta? <gasps> and I was like, uh, of course I do. What? And then she's like, hey, good morning. And here's a picture of my placenta. <laughs> this was inside of me. It was. It fed Owen. Why oh. did she have a picture of her placenta? I don't know. I don't know. I guess she wanted to look at it. I don't know if anybody's ever seen one, but it's no. like a veiny motherfucker. It was yeah. weird looking. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Well, okay, what did you think it was going to be? Um, I thought it was going to kind of look like a vagina poop. What? What's a vagina poop? That's a baby, essentially. A vagina poop is a baby. Well, no. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was going to be kind of, hmm, like a veiny red and white long tube filled with blood yeah that's I, what i thought it was going to be and it looked like that's not what it looked like i always thought that they would look like like a bigger more solid version of like period clots period blood but what do they look like jb pray tell um i did not examine it very closely mm -hmm. because but it looked like just a big thick mass of a thing <laughs> it was much bigger than i thought it was going to be it basically looks like a big pancake it looked like an organ that came out of her yeah it's a big it's a big vascular pancake like you can see all of the veins in the arteries like they're all squiggly and you know they branch out into littler and littler you know and it's like just a big round thingy and it look yeah and you can touch it and squish it and it's probably about the size of like i don't know what's that like five or six inches maybe it looked maybe like, more i thought it looked like it was a kidney that came out of her yeah yeah kind of like that a was, smushed kidney that's kind sure. of what i thought yeah i mean I'll, I'll get her permission of course but maybe uh i can send it to you and we can pop Anne's placenta no. i don't think we should do that well i want to do a placenta episode that'd be great I mean, people eat theirs and all that. I mean, I get if it's Anne, just you know what? If I would Anne, give her permission, of course. If Anne is okay with it, then sure. I'm sorry. That was my that she was a very the picture that, to me. That was a very visceral reaction I just had. I apologize. Oh yeah, I would obviously get her clearance first. It is. It was a thing that was in her body. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I know that because you said if it is Anne's decision alone. It's a very natural thing. I know. That's well, awesome. That's very sick that's, in a good way. It was way. extremely sick. Cool. But I liked it. Well, that's sick in a bad way. It was sick in a bad way, but well, I also thought it was cool. I yeah. mean, I think it's one of those things. It just depends on your perspective. Mm. Placentas are pretty good. But it was good. gross. It was a gross thing to see very early in the morning. I was not expecting it exactly at that time. Oh, what time was it? I don't know. It was before my first break at work. Oh, so, yeah. It was like before 10. It was early in the morning for placenta. Yeah. Ugh. So good job, Anne. Thanks for participating. Thanks for being sick. So, uh... So I see what the other side of my life brings to me in sickness. What do you guys have to bring to me in sickness? Well, well, we we catered this to you because we know this is something that you like. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I like a lot of things. Yeah. Justine, what is it? Um, so 
We know since you like cults. I love cults. Yeah. We thought we we thought we'd uh dig up a few a couple more of the obscure ones. Yeah. That you don't hear about all the time that uh are guilty of some pretty sick shit. Yeah. They have like um definitely they have like this we wanted ones that had disgusting content. Yeah. Because just being a cult isn't sick in of, yeah. of itself. Sometimes they're all right. They're not so bad. Yeah. We're but we're here to talk about the gross stuff. So yeah. Yes. Yes. And Halloween's uh, coming, so mm-hmm. it's on brand. Cult mm-hmm. season. Yeah. It is <laughs> cult. It's cult it's season. Cool. <laughs> I'm extremely excited and I'm very touched and honored. I'm prideful and honorable that you guys chose this for me. Cool. So who do you want to go first? Is there uh, a particular rhyme or reason? I don't don't think so. Then let's do Cards Against Humanity rules. Uh, Who pooped the most recently? Probably me. Oh, God. I don't remember the last time I pooped, so it's probably you. All right. So today I will be talking about the Ant Hill Kids. Okay, I've never heard. All right. Me neither. Well, this is off to a good start. So Mm -hmm. now you get to add another cult to your collection. I don't fucking know. (laughs) So um, I used three, the three main sources I used for this was um, an article from The Mirror um, by Jane Lavender, an article from a website called Cult Nation by Robin Roos, and an article by Isabel Tremblay from uh, what I'm assuming is a French Canadian paper called La Pressa. Ooh. So. Trey Jolie. Trey. Trey. La la. La la. Wait. So the Ant Hill Kids were a French-Canadian doomsday cult led by Roque Terrio from the 1970s until the end of the 1980s. Wow. Yep. So maybe like late 70s. I want to say like 77-ish through like 89. So these people definitely ate poutine, is what you're saying. Probably. French, French Canadian? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So, um, Terrio believed that the end of the world was imminent and founded the cult on the basis of guaranteeing his followers a place in heaven. They were initially known for their hippie ways of life, baked goods, and hard work ethic, but in actuality, they were living a gruesome nightmare of epic proportions. What? Let's hear more. You ready for it? Yeah. Gruesome nightmare. Oh, my. I'm excited. I'm setting the bar high here. Yay. All right. So Terrio was raised Catholic, and he became preoccupied with the idea of the apocalypse as a teenager. When he was a young adult, he converted to Seventh-day Adventist, but before long, he began to identify as a Christ-like figure who was humanity's only hope. Oh, he's like, oh, it's reasonable. Might as, well, might as well be the Messiah. Yeah, Why might not? as well be Jesus. Might as well. He, well. So he actually, he started to call himself Moises. Moises. I'm guessing that's the French version of Moses. Oh, okay. There's the baseball player, Moises Alou. Oh, yeah? Who did he play for? The the Montreal Expos? I don't know. I just know the name. (laughs) Sports facts. Facts with JB. (laughs) So as he began to attract followers with his charisma and words, he envisioned a collective where people could live freely, practice their faith, and make a simple living by selling baked goods. But in reality, as a cult formed, he forced his followers followers to cut themselves off from their friends and family outside the cult as one does yeah as they do that's yep. a hallmark that's, of a cult yep so shortly after forming the cult terrio who who was already preoccupied with the apocalypse became convinced the world would end in 1979 and in order to prepare f- prepare for the inevitable he had his followers construct a town on a mountainside in quebec which he named eternal mountain and as he watched them scurry around doing his bidding, he was reminded of worker ants and started to call him the Ant Hill Kids. So that's how they got their name. Okay. So 1979 came and went, and the world didn't end. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. That's Ter- how I felt in 2012. <laughs> right? And pray tell, how did he justify this? He explained this away by claiming that human time and God time were different, and that when he came up with the 1979 date, he was using human time. Oh. Oh, of course yeah. so that old thing this That's, this was it. good enough for his followers so because they're brainwashed by this point yes and whatever they see him as like he's probably amazing yep he's trey jolie you know yeah <laughs> they were just listening to the song 1979 on repeat they were ready for something new <laughs> didn't exist yet that's true that didn't come out till like 1996 <laughs> 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 so- <laughs> Anyway, around 
this time is when Terrio had decided that what he needed to do is expand his flock. So he married all nine of his female followers. I want to point out, this isn't, this isn't a huge cult. It's like manageable in size. It's like 30 people. I mean, so I think after, so he had, uh, he married all nine of his female followers, got them pregnant, and ended up having over 20 children with them. Sick. And that expanded their numbers to about 40. Men are trash. Well, this man You're going to get stocks, Heather. You can't say men are trash. Ugh, this man, know, Well, right. this man is definitely trash. Mark Zuckerberg's going to dox us. So <laughs> Continue. Right. So he's got 40 followers. Yeah. Still got more followers than we do. Most of his followers are his spawn. Yep. Good point. At this point. <laughs> so in 1984, he moved his cult to a place called Burnt River and started to exert even more control. They were forced to wear identical tunics, and he forbade his followers from speaking to each other without his permission. And couples were no longer allowed to have sex. And anyone who wanted out was physically punished. Yikes. So which way? Well. Oh. (laughs) This is where it starts to get sick. Because so far it hasn't. It's just like standard cult practices. Yeah. Yeah. So. Set up. Like, I'm the leader. I got to bang everybody. Nobody's banging if I don't let them bang. Yeah. Precisely. Standard cult shit. Yeah, and I think this is this is like a pretty short and sweet one. Um, so here we go. Over time, punishment escalated from being whipped with a belt to being stripped naked and whipped, sometimes outside in the cold. Oh my god! Being hit with hammers. Ugh. Suspended from the ceiling. Ugh. Having each body hair individually plucked out. Ugh. Being defecated and urinated on. Ugh. Ugh. Shit on your chest. Having their genitals burned with a blowtorch. Oh my god. Having their breasts cut off. <gasps> having surgeries performed on them by Terrio, despite him having no medical background. Oh, God. These surgeries included tooth removal, circumcision, and castration, done with any available tools like kitchen knives or pliers. Oh, my God. Uh, just getting your foreskin ripped off with a, with some pliers. You know, yeah, just, you your know, whole dick and balls just casual. right off with scissors. Oh, not even sanitized for your for your uh pleasure? enjoyment pleasure for your safety health for, for your, your health. health for your safety i no. don't know but god damn yeah. yeah so this is like shit was fucked up that's that's fucking fucked up um omg so eventually his followers were so much under his control that he had them breaking their own legs with sledgehammers what their own legs yes so they were they wouldn't be able to escape because they wouldn't be able to leave because they couldn't walk out. I guess. Like how he, somebody might hit themselves in the head going like, I'm stupid, stupid. But like he told, them, he told them to do it and they did it. He could have them sit on a hot stove, shoot at each other in the shoulder, eat their own feces, poop, eat each other's feces, Ew. Ew. and cut off each other's toes. Uh, oh, oh, my just God. Toes. Oh, God. I'd rather cut off toes than eat poop. So (laughs) I don't know why that is, but ew. This is so this is the stuff he was doing to the adults. Um, Oh, no. Oh, no. no. So kids were not exempt. What the fuck? They were often sexually abused. And these were his for I think for the most part, his children. Trigger warning or content warning. I'm not going into detail about the sexual abuse. Okay. Just that it happened. Okay. I didn't see any specifics, and thank goodness for that. Yeah. But I think most of the children were his. Yeah. I don't know how many kids, because there were also couples in the cult, so I don't know how many children were not his, but he did ban them from having sex from each other with each other at some point. So That's so what they're... most cults seem to do. Yeah, so it's mostly his kids. So um, the children would also be nailed to trees so the other children could throw rocks at them. Oh, my God. Or held over fires. At least two children died due to his abuse, one from being left out in the cold to freeze to death, and another due to a botched circumcision. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking horrible. Got his wiener got cut off and probably got infected or some shit, and then he died of sepsis. So I have a brief silver lining. Oh. Brief. A brief break in the clouds, so to speak. In 1987, social workers removed 17 children from the cult. But for some reason, he, uh, Terrio was not arrested and was allowed to continue culting. So what the fuck is the, that? Is that the proper verb of running a cult? Oh, I've, I'm just a culting. Gotta a keep, culting, we will go. I don't think it is, but I'm going to use it anyway. All right, I I like it. A culting, I like, we will go. I like to verb nouns. You yeah. Know? I don't know how he 
wasn't like taken into custody then but okay so towards Canada. that was well, he he's a white guy right uh, he was a crazy looking white guy he gets off every time well so towards the end of 1988 a follower named solange boylard was se- experiencing severe abdominal pain and terrio announced he would cure her so to do this he had her lay naked on a table and he punched her in the stomach oh rude he then performed an enema on her using olive oil and molasses. Ugh. Sticky. Oily and sticky. You know, just standard. Your standard, standard enema. Standard. Yeah. <laughs> then, while Solange was still conscious, he cut open her stomach with a kitchen knife. Oh, my God. Reached in and pulled out a chunk of her intestines with his bare hands. Ugh. Ooh. Then another cult member, Gabrielle Lavalle, was instructed to stitch her back up with regular needle and thread while another woman blew into a tube that had been shoved down her throat. Oh, my God. Ugh. Of course, Solange died the next day. Surprise. Like, it took, well, it took that long, but I guess stomach injuries take a while to kill you. Just like a hor- Unfortunately, it's a slow, painful death. It's yeah. a horrible way to go. You like gotta bleed out slowly. And, and her only sin was complaining of a stomach pain? Well, it's not even that he wasn't punishing her for complaining about a stomach pain. He really pain. thought he was helping? Yes. He, he wanted to, like, make her, like, yes, he was going to fix her. Oy. Oh. But he's insane. So. Um, but no worries that she had died because Terry announced he could bring her back to life. Oh, well, that's, that's convenient. All right. How's he do this? Well, <laughs> of course, by drilling a hole into her skull mm-hmm. and ejaculating into it. Oh, oh my God. Everybody what? knows jizz in the brain brings you back to life. Oh, my God. That's really nasty. That's super nasty. And then forcing each of his male followers to do the same thing. Oh. The more jizz, the more alive. Spoiler, it didn't work. <laughs> she stayed dead Fuck. and um, they buried her on the compound grounds wow did he go to upstairs hollywood medical school too (laughs) is that another simpsons reference yeah (laughs) got it so at this point um gabrielle the one who had stitched solange up had had enough and she escaped but she was still so much under terrio's spell that she came back soon after and to punish her he tore off one of her fingers drove a knife through her arm to pin it down and then cut it off Oh, my God. What is he, a chimpanzee? Uh, what? I just hear about chimpanzees ripping fingers off. I never heard of a human ripping a finger off. He has. Well, like, I mean, he used, I think he used, oh, like, pliers. Tool. Yeah, oh. he didn't rip. Yeah. So it wasn't until after Gabrielle escaped for a second time that he was finally arrested and put in prison. Oh, well, yeah, very timely. So after he was put in jail, he managed to father another four children with his remaining followers who opened a bakery near the prison and visited him, proclaiming his innocence. Oh, so he was allowed to have conjugal visits this whole time? Guess so. Well, that's cool that he's allowed to like pass his genes along. Yep. It's totally Even normal. Even more times. Not psychopathic genes. Yeah, yeah. Glad there's more of his progeny out there. That makes me happy. <laughs> oh, it's well, those poor kids, though. Yeah. I mean, it's not their fault. It's True. not their fault, but they're... They probably have mental illness because their dad well, is. They might not. You can't. Maybe not. You can't I, always, I don't know. You can't always assume just because someone had shitty parents that they were going to turn out to be shitty people. True. And they weren't raised by him. That's true. So, well, especially the younger ones who were born after he went. It just like to sucks. Mm. It's like he purposefully had kids while he was in prison, and it's like knowing that you can't be there to take care of them and help like participate in their lives well, like, that's just I, those very ones were sad. probably better off though i think he was convinced he was going to get out of prison because he was still convinced he was the messiah oh god well yeah of course so delusional so right. he's like he super... didn't think he'd done anything wrong oh jesus of course not so um so this this <laughs> is all happening in like the early like right, right around 1990 mm-hmm. um terrio died in 2011 when his cellmate matthew mcdonald shivved him in the neck McDonald reportedly went up to the prison guards afterwards and said, that piece of shit is down on the range. Here's the knife. I've sliced him up. Wow. It's baller. Yep. He was like super proud of it. Yep. That's awesome. And in the years since escaping the cult, Gabrielle re- regained her religious faith and wrote a book about her experiences called La... I can't speak French. Jesus. La Lions de la Brebus. Can I see it? 
Is it La Lyon? Maybe. De la Brevi. Probably. There we go. <laughs> I don't fucking know. And had forgiven Terrio, although she was clear her forgiveness was not the same as, as she put it, granting amnesty. And she still considered him to be evil. So the forgiveness was more like her being a, a, a Christian, essentially. Yeah. But not mm-hmm. that he, you know, that what he had done was okay, if that makes sense. Yeah. Christian um, grace or whatever. And in the end, after learning of his death and processing it, she said it was a deliverance. And that's the story of Roque Terrio and the Ant Hill Kids. Well, that was pretty gross. Yeah, yeah. He's That's a sick fuck. Ew. Don't yeah. like that. No. Ugh. Glad I didn't get into that cult. Yeah. Well, so. Me too. I'm glad. Yeah. Where in Canada was that? Quebec. I'm pretty sure I never heard of that before either. I, I hadn't either. Quebecois. Quebecois. Is it soi? Quebecois. Quebecois. I don't Quebecois. know. I love to say Quebecois. If the fucking Virgo was here, he'd tell you because he's like, I know all of the French French, French pronunciations. I'm oh. so good. Is that what he would say? Does uh, not. He's very humble. He wouldn't say it like that. Does he parler français? Oh, yeah. He parler français. Oh. Not like super fluently, but he's all right. Way does, better than me. Does he parley it like a French person or does he parley it like a Yinzer? A French person. Ooh, very Yeah, nice. his, that's the thing is his pronunciation is very good to the point where I'm embarrassed. Because <laughs> you're like, oh, je m'appelle. Yeah, right? <laughs> je m'appelle Lafayette. Yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, he has very good pronunciation. But yeah, very interesting. I love yeah. that. So they probably ate poutine, murdered some people, mm-hmm. you know. Just mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. little this and that. Did some weird dick toppings. Did some weird titty choppings. Titty choppings and dick toppings. Ugh. Pulled Ugh. out some intestines, chopped off some fingers. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. Cool. Sick. That that was, is, yeah. that's, that's fucking nasty. Well, yeah. So what you got, kid? What do I got? Okay, so mine is also a cult that I've never heard of that I think of. I mean, my brain is Swiss cheese at this point, so I have no fucking idea. But encephalitis. Bovine encephalitis. Okay, so I am going to talk about the Matamoras Human Sacrifice Cult. So it all starts with the death of this guy called Mark Kilroy. We're going to start with him because in the words of one of the mothers of the victims of this whole cult issue, uh, quote, if it wasn't for the Kilroy boy, none of the other men, including my son, would have ever been found. So isn't that sad? Like, you know, most of the time it doesn't take for a white person to die before you can find out. So let's get into it. So this American, he went missing after spring break partying in 1989. He was a student at University of Texas and went to South Padre Island with his like bros. You know, they're spring breaking it. They're like hanging out with the I so many references to the Miss Tan line contest. I'm like. They're really into Miss Tan lines. That's some peak 80s shit right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's so cool about a tan line? Is um, it? I think it's that you take your top off and then you show your tan. You show your ghost boobies. Probably. I, I guess. You show, look at my tan. Look how, like. I was tan, but this was not tan. This these was, are my boobs. Yeah, my, my ghost white boobies, which is, like, disgusting a to Miss me. A Miss Tan line. God. Yeah, so he was, like, hanging out with the, the third place winner of Miss Tan oh. line. Well, she was bronze. Yeah. Oh, God. So, um, this town that they were partying in, um, it's right across at the very bottom of Texas. It's uh, They go across this bridge and they go to um, Matamoras, which is... It's uh, like a party town. You know, they have a bunch of bars and stuff there and they just walk across this bridge. So at one point on the way back, the one night he gets separated, this Mark Kilroy gets separated from his uh, bros and they don't realize until in the morning because they're all drunk and we're whatever. They're like, whatever, he probably got like, you know, a ride home, whatever. So the next morning, they can't fucking find him. Long story short, a large scale manhunt is launched by his parents. I think he's from New Mexico. All the guys that were together, they all went to the same Santa Fe High School. This was even featured on America's Most Wanted. On April 9th, Eli. Elio Hernandez Rivera, a drug boss, and uh, his nephew, Serafin Hernandez Rivera, ran a police 
roadblock and they were in possession of marijuana and they gave up the identities of drug dealers under the pressure of questioning so this was kind of like a stupid mistake that i'm gonna kind of like get into later the stupidity of their error they took the um police to this ranch 20 miles west of matamoros and it was this place that was kind of used by their drug gang for drug smuggling operations so let's get to the sick part the discovery of the horrors so a ranch hand was questioned um like the cops were there you know they're the the federales were questioning his ranch hand and they said he said he saw this white american guy at the ranch and he pointed to the shack on the hill so they approached the shack and immediately they're like this is not right they smelled decaying flesh they see like various debris in the yard, like melted candles, uh, cigar butts, empty bottles, greasy cauldrons. The they go into the shack, and the floor of the shack was just smeared with blood. There was candles in there that were still lit, and they were still burning down. There was an iron kettle that contained wooden and iron spikes and a charred human brain, ah! and also a roasted turtle what? in there. Well, you can't make turtle soup without a little brain. Oh. Yeah. You know, it's just, it wouldn't be complete. The, 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 uh, what do you call it? The flavor palette. It's the, the umami. The umami flavor of it. You have to, you have to balance out those. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. They found human hair as well, animal parts, congealed blood, scattered coconut shells. They also found electric electrical tape, like large amounts of electrical tape, uh, and weapons like a machete, a hammer, and then also a large oil drum that police said it looked like it was used to boil victims alive. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is basically like a human slaughterhouse, like an abattoir. To be to continue with the French oh. theme. This is down this is south of the border. This is uh so we're going from French Canadian to south of the oh. south of the border Amer america's <laughs> america's lovely neighbors yeah so many horrors they found in this shack they found like hearts ears eyes that had been ripped off of people testicles that had been ripped off of these guys just like laying around yeah or, like yeah. artfully arranged laying or... around okay oh, oh. oh. That's undignified. Uh, I agree. Kil uh, Mark Kilroy's body was found at this time. His brain and spine was removed <gasps> and his legs were his severed. His spine? Yeah. Oh. So, like, get this. So, uh, Hernandez investigate led investigators to where Kilroy's grave was. And there was this piece of wire sticking up out of the ground. This is so fucked up. He explained that the wire was attached to his spinal column. And when the body had to cave decayed enough it was like meant to be you pull on that wire and you pull up the whole spinal column and then it's like a, intact and then they use these human vertebras as making for making necklaces <gasps> and when they arrested several of these cult members they had been wearing necklaces of human vertebrae isn't that, isn't oh that my insane? god Ugh. yeah yeah yeah, so uh, it's pretty interesting. Like, cops, like, they're, like, going, they're all over this place. They actually ordered one of the gang members to dig up the bodies at gunpoint, like, in the hot sun. Like, so he's digging up. And I think in the end, there were about 15 bodies. So who was responsible? Yeah, what that's, the fuck? That's what I'm left wondering. What yeah. were they up to? Who was responsible? It turned out to be this guy, Aldolfo de Jesus Constanzo. He's this 20, he's only 26. <laughs> He was known as El Padrino, or the Godfather. He was the cult leader. This is where the cult comes in. He was the cult leader. He was a drug dealer. He's what turned out to be a serial killer as well. So described by... So all my information comes from several articles. Uh, Texas Monthly actually does a really good article on this. I've got a Rolling Stone stolen article that I referenced and also the Wikipedia for this guy. So he's described by Texas Monthly as shadowy extremely duplicitous and also flamboyantly gay like he frequented the zona rosa which is literally called the pink zone it's uh the gay district of this area and uh he also so he acted as a high priest for this drug gang his he grew up his parents uh, his mother 
like was a high priestess in voodoo and they he took him to haiti back in the day and so that's where he learned all of this stuff so his partner was this woman called sarah aldrit she's 24 years old and she's a student at the Tex texas southmost college which is like really interesting because there's these a lot of members of the cult and also her they she was an honor student at this college she was straight a's and then like she would go across this bridge like she was straight a student by night and then uh, by day and then by night she would go to across the bridge and uh basically do all these like blood rituals and murder chickens and goats and things oh like God. that and perform blood ma blood magic and a lot of members of the cult were also went to this university there was a lot of english speech english speaking and uh, bilingual should i say english spanish speaking professors there wait professors in the cult no in the oh the university the university Got yeah it. Okay. and i there were like interviews with them and they're like yeah we were teaching these people and at the same time they were going home and they were performing these murders and stuff and it was just like what the fuck <laughs> oh my God. she's a straight a student but yet she's murdering people okay so the whole reason why they were doing these ritual killings was because the godfather had brainwashed his members into believing that uh this would prevent them from getting murdered I mean, from getting caught. So that's why he, at one point, these guys recklessly just went through this police, like, routine, police drug checkpoint. They're just like, blew right past it. Oh, I'm invincible. I did this blood magic. You know, nothing's going to hurt me. They believed they were invincible and uh, invisible, literally, at some points. So uh, when they got caught, they were obviously very shocked because yeah. they thought that it was... Not he did blood magic. <laughs> so that's yeah. impossible. So this blood magic, it kind of comes from it comes from voodoo. There's this other religion called Palo Mayombe, Santeria. You know, you may have heard of that. I don't sure. practice Santeria. I've heard this I a ain't lot. Got no crystal I don't ball. Got no crystal ball. Yeah. That's where all these beliefs were based. But he like took it to the extreme and he kind of like formed his own. Sure you know fucked up version of it so he was doing ritual sacrifices and casting spells for these he got to start by casting spells for these drug lords and he eventually became like kind of like the head of these drug these drug guys and um he killed snakes chickens goats zebras apparently lion cubs Wait, i don't know where he's, where he's getting them yeah where is he getting zebras and lion cubs no from? fucking oh. clue ohio probably they have very liberal exotic pets laws yeah do they oh yeah you can have whatever in ohio really i think so that's why you're always hearing about like the fucking like tigers and shit my fucking elephant Go well, what the hell else is there to do in ohio you might as well just have a rhino right well buy wine at trader joe's yeah you can buy that chuck anyway anyway eat it melt so um Let's go back to the murders and the ghastly crime scene. So who were these guys that were in these like weird, disgusting, like crazy, like almost graves? The first victims were rival drug dealers, dirty cops that had reneged on a deal or otherwise, you know, betrayed them somehow. They eventually. So it's like at first they started out, we're going to use. They're, they were robbing graves. They're like, we're going to use these already dead bones for our rituals. And then uh, the godfather was like, that's not enough. We need to start murdering people because that's going to be, you know, way stronger and make our spells way more effective. And so that's when they were robbing all like the, you know, the rival drug dealers. But then he's like, OK, no, we need to have a white American brain that we need to murder him. And that's, how, you know, that will be the most potent. So that's where Mark Kilroy came in. And that's how like they, you know, all of this kind of investigation started and they found it. That was the beginning of the end. So Kilroy was bound and gagged, taken to this ra the ranch, and he tried to escape, was apparently wrestled back in the car. Constanzo killed him 12 hours after he was kidnapped by chopping him on the back of the neck with a machete. <gasps> like, oh. basically, he decapitated. He decapitated. I think the youngest victim was preteen, maybe like oh. 12 to 14. Oh, my God. Yeah. Super fucked up. So... What he believed was the priest, Constanzo, you know, the godfather in this case, uh, becomes possessed by these spirits he, after, you know, as he's murdering. He said uh, that 
It is said that he spits liquor and blows cigar smoke on his victims and that all of these things were found all around the shack. You know, that was part of the degree, the debris and stuff. The ceremony went like this. First, the high priest offered up the sacrifice, cutting the victim's throat, or as in Kilroy's, Kilroy's case, cutting off the top of his head with a machete. The victims were usually killed first, then mutilated, though not always. Then the brains, hearts, lungs, and testicles were boiled in an iron kettle, and the resulting brew was passed among members so that could, they could drink and be sacrificed. <laughs> Oh, my God. This is from that Texas Monthly article. It's so good. It's so detailed. After that, uh, laymen of the cult buried the remains in and around the corral behind the shed. Sarah, you know, our straight-A student. Straight-A Sarah. Straight-A Sarah. She's, like, the second in command. She was responsible for at least one human sacrifice that the police could definitely discern was for sure her fault. Could Probably could have been more. A guy had, I guess, insulted her in some way, and she had him lured to the ranch, and then she supervised a slow death. She tortured him. She sliced off his nips. So, like, going back to your slicing off the breast, she had his nips sliced off, and she boiled him alive. So, like, (gasps) those drums that they found, yeah, boiled people alive. Uh, The Federales burned down the shack after all of the, you know, investigation and blah 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 all that was done they eventually burned on the shack and they performed they had like a white magic ritual done wow on it to like ward away the evil spirits because it was so fucked up so yeah uh the bodies like had been all exhumed you know before that and like the you know they exhumed the bodies and then family members were trying to come down and identify them it wasn't always that successful so what contain came of the godfather what he happened? went to jail? Well, I'll tell you. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. So the Federales are hunting for Constanzo, and they found him in a Mexico City apartment hold up, and uh, he just went like, when he found out, when he, okay, so when he found out that his shack had been burned down, like his magic place, you know, the sacred magic place had been burned down, and when he pretty much knew that he was being, you know, closed in upon and he was going to get caught, he just, like, went bananas. He starts throwing money out of the window of his apartment indiscriminately, there's wads of cash just tossing it out the window. He then was like, you know, the cops are pretty much at his door, so he had one of the cult members shoot him and his uh, lover slash companion, Martin Quintana Rodriguez, and he, they just were like, when, they, when the cops found them, they were just riddled with bullets, absolutely riddled with bullets, like almost like they couldn't tell who they were. So 14 cult members total were charged in a range of crimes. They, you know arrested the guy that killed the cult member, you know. Sarah Aldrete, Elio Hernandez Rivera, and Serafin Hernandez were convicted of murder. Uh, Mexico does not have the death penalty. They were given over 60 years each by, uh, six years each by the Mexican justice system. That's it? Yep. If they how- could get out. Yeah, however, yeah. If Aldrete is ever released, American police still want to prosecute her for the murder of Mark Kilroy. So she could, like, if she ever gets released, which I don't think she will, she could probably will die in prison. But, you know, could get out. She'll be in her mid 70s. Yeah. She. 80s. Sorry, I can math. Jesus. So. I don't know. Eh. So she still could get prosecuted. But yeah, what's the point of prosecuting an 80 some year old woman? I don't know. But yeah, so. Yeah, that's the end of that. That's horrible. So gross. Oh. So it's just sick cool. I'd never that heard of them. Blood I mean, rituals. Yeah. I mean, the Satanist in me does like the, the blood magic. Yeah. But then that's also bad. It's yeah. not it's not good. Yeah. Yeah, I know when you guys joke about blood magic, you're not talking about really murdering people. No, right. I'm not talking about pulling out somebody's spinal cord and wearing it around my neck. No. Although the imagery does sound badass, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but, but, I was, not. but the reality of it is yeah, pretty terrible. No, yeah. yeah. Of course. Of course. Of course. All the Santeria and stuff, it's usually like chickens. You've heard of that before. Of course, yeah. Or like somebody like cutting her leg and bleeding onto a fire. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. But not. This is, yeah. Darling, I don't know why I go to the extremes. 
<laughs> sure that was, is. That was extreme. an extremely cool William Joel reference, my yeah, friend. Yeah, he's my favorite. Um, there you go, in between. Yeah, there. <laughs> I also like that they did white magic and not been like, oh, maybe we should not um pay any attention to this magic nonsense. Yeah, like that was so funny. They talked about how the cops, the articles that I read, it talked about how the cops were like, yeah, we don't believe in any of this fucking hooey, but uh, this is so goddamn spooky and gross. Let's get a white priestess in here just in case. <laughs> They really did. They, like, laid a cross down in the ashes after they burned down this, like, hideous shack, you know. (laughs) Fucked up. Yeah, I still can't get over the the spine being yeah, removed. Yeah, that's, that's that's where I I got a little. Hung that was up the on. grossest part. Yeah. Yep. Ripping the spine up. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> from the ground. Uh huh. What yeah. was the first cult you guys heard about that you can remember? Hailbop um, was the first one I heard about. Maybe Hailbop. Yeah, I was like in the Hailbop for a bit. Were you? Yeah, I was a little bit into it. When did you first hear about it? Uh, I guess whenever it happened. I I I think I I bought the Newsweek uh magazine for it in like the mid two thousands or was no, it was the nineties? It was like when we were in either like late. Hailbop was before Heaven's Gate. Yeah, yeah, Hailbop was before Heaven's. I'm pretty sure. Well, Heaven's Gate happened at the same time. I think were they the they same thought th- that they were, Heaven- were they the same thing? Yeah. Oh, well, oh. Heaven's oh. Gate. Heaven's Gate was the cult that they thought that they were gonna. They killed themselves because they thought they were, were gonna, gonna hitch the ride, ride on oh, the yeah. right. Comet. They were the ones with the sneakers, right? Oh yeah, and the, the yeah. purple shrouds, matching Nike the shrouds. I feel like the first cult I remember knowing was probably the um, the Branch Davidians because of the Waco. Oh, okay. But I was like. I mean, I was really, really young, so I don't think I really, like, processed it much beyond, like, crazy cult people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's a fire. Yeah. I mean, I was a kid, Just so I didn't know what the hear. fuck was going on. Like, uh, what was, like, G- well, I'm sure you guys probably will agree, but the first scandal that I ever remember hearing about is a tie between um, Nancy and Tanya and Joey, uh, no, what's his face, getting his dick cut off. Oh, uh, Joey Botafuco. No, not no, Joey no, 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 yeah, 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 no, no, that, uh. Well, yeah, Amy Fisher's in there as well, but, like, um, what's his name, uh. uh Bobbitt. Oh, Bobbitt, Bobbitt. John Wayne Bobbitt. John Wayne Bobbitt, yeah, he Lorena. He got a robot Hashtag justice for Lorena. Yeah. But, yeah. He got a robot cock, and then he ruined it by trying to, like, he got his cock fixed after he got it cut off, and then he went and got, um, I watched the documentary on Netflix, it's very good, Lorena, oh my god, and then he went and tried to get a uh, penis enlargement, and it was a botched job, and now his dick doesn't work anymore, so ha ha. Oh my god. So what'd you get? How do we get on this tangent? I guess we were thinking about weird scandals. things that happened in the 90s. Scandals of the 90s. Our very scandals first scandals. Of the 90s. Oh my God. I remember. Think about things I read about in Weekly World News. I remember. Yeah. I oh. remember listening to like hearing about John Wayne Bobbitt and then hearing like, I saw the sign like on the radio, like every fucking morning on B94. Oh, I love that song. John Day Bubba Shelley. The first scandal I remember was um, <laughs> Dan Quayle misspelling potato. potato! <laughs> oh, that's a wholesome scandal. That's that how, was a very wholesome that's scandal. That's how old I am. That's why I try to make sure I always spell that correctly. Can you? That was. A Do whole- you remember when that's what we criticized right, our political when that figures was, for? When that was a wholesome. Like, that was oh, such, those were the days. It was so wholesome. Like that ruined his political career because yeah. he couldn't spell potatoes. Yeah. Like, Holy hell. That whole bullshit about, oh, the the liberal media, the liberal media. No, the media is controlled by the goddamn conservatives. Like, they literally control all the talking points. Otherwise, a way bigger deal would be made about goddamn Cheeto Hitler. Um, speaking and all of, of his transgressions. Speaking of, and this is a good segue into sickest thing of the week in a good way. Oh, yeah. good. Not, good. Not, not to take away your hosting duties. No, no, I'm no, sorry, no, please. If, if a natural segue introduces itself, this please is a take great. It. This is a great segue. Um, just this morning, the uh, the that the Ukraine whistleblower report was made public. Fuck yes, oh, man. Yeah. And yeah. Is this finally gonna? I was. I was do just something? gonna fucking happen. I was, well, I was reading it this morning. I mean, oh, the, are like, shit going I, down? That's sick in Everyone, a good way. Everyone's talking about impeachment. This is not a Have you guys, Did you guys read the whistleblower Mm-mm. complaint? I read some, but you not should, all of it. You should read it. It's like seven pages. Okay. It's not super long. I read like yeah. a third. It's um you should read it. It'll it's it's very I you know, I think it's I think it's very convincing and apparently um, you know, 
people in charge find the whistleblower to be credible. Of course, the segue being the fucking New York Times halfway doxes this person. Excuse me? Yeah, so... Um, Fuck, oh, God damn, I can't believe I pay for them. Right, so first of all, I know, I need to cancel my subscription because they're just like, I, I subscribe to the Washington Post, that's fine. I don't need the New York Times, too. Like, fuck that. But We have both. There, so anyway, first of all, Trump, like, um, it was speaking to uh, UN, amba- like, some of our ambassadors, and, uh, well, I'm gonna fuck up this story. Anyway, like, today, and, like, made an oblique comment about like threatening the whistleblower like like likening him to a spy and like you know what we do you know you used to do with spies and i don't something like that waterboard them (laughs) or like you know murder them Mm -hmm. or anyway yeah so um and so but the new york times today uh said that they said that the whistleblower was is a someone who is with the cia assigned to the white house and is uh an analyst or is likely an analyst i think they were basing that off of like it's how not kellyanne conway what no it's a man um and so now people so now people are pissed with the times i guess now i've also well it's i just repeated what was in the times anyway they're pissed with the times for like revealing that because you know this guy's done a really like good thing and it'd be really awful if something happened to him but i mean with, i don't think they've i don't think the name is out but, you know, it's really, like, narrowing down possibilities. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, but super sick in a good way that some shit is finally starting to, like, topple. Like, after three years and everything that's happened, the Mueller, that mean- like, the Mueller report, like, something has finally happened where people are, people are finally actually saying, like, okay, this is, this is a lot, he has now crossed a line that we can't deal with the republicans are still have their talking points and they're still like digging in their heels but i guess i also read somewhere that i think something like 30 i think 30 senators if they could um if they couldn't like secretly vote Mm -hmm. that they would vote to get rid of him but that they're afraid of being primaried well then doesn't that just leave us with president pence yeah, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's just crazy times right now. It's yeah. crazy, crazy. It times. is crazy times. Uh, thank you, uh, John Lovett. I really appreciate that uh, topical political. Do update. you mean John Stewart? No, John Lovett. Love it or leave it. What? what? I'm, a, I'm offended. Don't you listen to Love It or Leave It? No. no. What? He's just a political guy. He's I didn't really know that. good. I didn't know he did that now. Okay, I'm not talking it's about John-, John Lovett's. Oh, oh, I apologize. Not I, John Lovett. Yeah, I was thinking of the critics. Same. I was oh, like, I was no. like, I, I was unaware he was in the political punditry now. John Lovett is, uh, he, he's a political podcaster. He has this podcast called Love It or Leave It. Oh, okay. And he's also, I didn't know this until like fucking a year after I've been listening to his goddamn podcast. He's also uh, the partner of Ronan Farrow. Oh, they're like a fucking power couple, political power couple. Well, journalistic power couple, political mm. journalistic. Power. Anyways. So, yeah, sorry. I was just trying to say that you were like, hey, I have a political podcast. That's oh. all I was trying to say. <laughs> OK, I get it now. Sorry. Yeah. I did not um, understand your reference. I, I apologize. Me neither. Damn it. I would not even. I, I love d- it. I don't I don't I think, do love him, though. I, I don't think that I'm that articulate about politics, too. No, well, I mean, pretty good, I though. probably butchered that anyway. So I have a that sick in a good way. Yeah. Please share. Uh, uh, Pittsburgh native Billy Porter. <gasps> yeah. Won, yeah. He won did. the Emmy. And I don't know if you guys watch Pose, but Pose it's on my list. Is fucking good. So I actually, I only recently watched Paris is Burning for the first mm-hmm. time like a couple oh, months yeah. ago. Uh, I do want to watch Pose. It's on my list. I just haven't gotten around to oh, it. Oh my God. It's really good. Yeah. Um, the one character is a super bad actress. Um, but whatever, she's very diva like, and it's still kind of fun. It's very Ryan Murphy, but it's like way more um together, and like it has like a a cohesive like ending. It just doesn't like you know go into like nothingness like Ryan Murphy normally does. Oh, is it over? Did uh, they no. end it? No, no. It's uh, it has two seasons, and I think they're gonna do a season three. Okay. 
yeah so it's definitely not over or anything like that and it's not an anthology but yeah um it's really really good and i think billy porter definitely deserved it and i was really embarrassed to realize that i didn't know that he was from pittsburgh our hometown i had no idea he was from pittsburgh until he won the emmy I was, and it was like pittsburgh native i was like what the fuck i so, knew i i mean i i knew he had gone to i think he went to cmu yeah so i knew that i wasn't 100 percent sure if he was a native i don't know if you were there um a few years ago, we at a derby after party at there when we went to the place and, the, and we always had like the drag show. Yeah. At the after party, one of them, um, Billy Porter came in. No way. To our after party um, towards the end of the night because it was when he was in town performing. Yeah. In a show. Yeah, he. I don't and, know if it was Kinky Boots, but I know he was. He won the Tony. Yeah. Um, I don't. For Kinky Boots on Broadway. But he he so he had been in town for something and he came in. Uh, and I just and I only remember because I wouldn't even have noticed because the place was packed and I was like on the far end. Like, I have a feeling everyone was probably like playing tits or something. Yeah. For those of like you who a, don't know, tits is a form of like it's like a beer, beer pong, pong game where you like it's bounce very, it off your chest. It's very complicated. Yeah. It's, as far as I could tell, I never. Act, well, I played it once. I, know, I didn't yeah, get I don't it. Really play anyway, it. my point is, but I think like Lola or one of the drag queens like made an announcement that he was yeah there and yeah so that was like pretty fucking cool so, anyway, yeah yeah congrats i'm yeah. so proud that's super sick and i screamed so loud that my cats jumped off the couch i was really happy that he won that and also that michelle williams our girl won for fossey verdon because she played gwen verdon to a t as she always does because she's so fucking talented yeah nice highly recommend fossey or burden as well but those were the two in the emmys you know i'm such like an award show junkie you are you those do. were the two emmys that i really like wanted them to win and i was really glad they were the big award races for me as you watch this showpiece of the golden age of television yeah yeah it's strong competition like yeah. in the actor categories there's like eight nominees in each category it's bananas now did yeah. game of thrones get any of their yeah on- oh they shouldn't have got any peter dink dink won for I a best actor him, in a drama yeah he deserved it that's fine for his body of work it's fine maybe not particularly for the body season, of work but- not this season but yeah it was really awkward i felt when they came out and they did like all the oh game of thrones is ending and they brought like half a cast out and like did this big bow and stuff like that and it's like nobody's addressing any elephant in the room that like most people like thought it was pretty blah it was wow. a pretty turd pretty big turd at the end Oh well. Oh well. Are we wrapping this shit up? Yeah, let's wrap it. I don't have. You don't have one. No. Well, I have a second one. Oh well, then please take my turn. My second. My second one is that I binge watched all of Letter Kenny last weekend, (laughs) (laughs) and I'm just telling everyone about it. I'm everyone I come up to. I'm like, have you watched Letter Kenny? Have you heard of Letter Kenny? And it's just I know. Describe it. So it's a Canadian like sitcom i suppose and it's um they also eat poutine and craft dinner with the ketchup i don't know if they eat a lot of poutine in this show they drink a lot of lager how many references to poutine are you gonna make i love poutine cheese curds cheese curds and fries and gravy god damn well anyway so Ugh. letter kenny it's like set in like a rural ontario small town and the way i've been describing it it like it's I don't know it's it's got like elements of like a lot of different shows and it's just really really good it's really funny the seasons are really short and I think everyone should watch it it's on Hulu the main guy looks beefy hot he is yeah so he's like a beefy farmer it's very very funny it's very quotable like it's the kind of show where like like there's like the jokes are very like they they repeat them in a good way like it's like good repetition Yeah, callbacks yeah callbacks exactly that's it it's very there's a lot of callbacks and I just mostly I just want people to quote the show with like constantly. That's all I want. I like the way they ho- reference it as like the reverse. It's always sunny. Oh, yeah. That, I did describe the it like that. So it's because it's like you have that core four gang. Yeah. And everybody in Always Sunny is an asshole. Right. To each other. It's evil. Right. They're so, sociopath. They're all sociopaths. Letter Kenny, yeah. they're all good. Yeah. I really? would say. Yeah. They're well, they're they're like wholesome. They're not necessarily like like they get into like. I know they're, they get into fights. They're interest like they're interesting people. They're not like perfect, they're, but they but they're essentially good people. They're not sociopaths. Yeah, but they're it's like the core four, and they're always it's it's always a like what's happening with them, and, and I'm not defend I'm, your honor. I'm not. They yes, do drink they a lot as well. They yeah. do. 
anyway, I'm not describing it well. I think everyone should just watch it. And um, and I just want people to quote Letter Kenny with me constantly. Nerdcats. What's a Letter Kenny quote? Pitter patter. Let's get at her. <laughs> 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 to be fair. To be fair. Uh, get that man a poppers. Yeah. yeah see, see this you have to watch. To you me. have to watch yeah. it, and then you'll know. I will. Yeah. I gotta watch uh so many things. Yeah. The golden age of television. I know. Yeah. All of the TV shows are coming back. They're all coming back. The good place, they're all coming back. I can't wait week. for the next season of Shits Creek to show up on Netflix. There you go. So oh, good. I'm it's watching, so good too. I'm watching the It's What We Do in Shadows uh, uh, TV show what now. What we do in the shadows. So which good. is one of my very favorite vampire movies. Yeah. yeah I've only and seen, the show is so good. I've only seen the movie now. I haven't seen the show yet. I so didn't I know you it. liked eating worms. <laughs> I do that all the time. Wait, but Taiko Atiti isn't in the show, or he is. No, it's He's, a different. It's a different okay. cast. I think that's why I've like sat on the show because it's not the same cast. It's not the same cast, but it's basically the same like archetype. It's funny. It's, the, the, it's good. Yeah, the okay. actors are really good. Like it's uh, Matt Berry, who's like he was in the IT crowd, and he's just like a British comedic actor, and he's like been around for a long time. And I forget what the woman's name is, but she's super fucking funny. And uh Gregor. Who, Gregor. Yeah. Who's the um who's the familiar that's like so pathetic? Oh, Gu- I, Guillermo. I, yeah, I yeah, Guillermo. Guillermo is the familiar that's very uh very pathetic. But yeah, it's it's good. Highly recommend. But I love the Take T T and I'm really excited to find out that Take T T is directing Thor four. Your favorite. Sweet. Yeah, your your favorite uh branch of the Marvel is yeah it, is it Marvel I don't even know yeah it's Marvel okay. yeah <laughs> definitely Thor is my favorite because he's the sexiest. <laughs> eh, I don't care. You don't think Thor's sexy? Oh no, I mean I don't care about the Marvel universe. Oh, okay, I don't even know like who who plays Thor. What does he look like? Uh, it's Chris Hemsworth. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, is he he's... the one who's married to Miley Cyrus? No, that's his brother Liam. Oh, Liam okay. Hemsworth. So I can't keep the Hemsworths. He's having a sad Which boy hunk, summer. But all of the Hemsworths are all right snacks. They are snacks. So. Even in the uh, even the youngest one who's on Westworld and is like a semi snack. Oh, there's another one. He's the yeah. youngest one. Yeah. I, oh, well, I don't know. I think his name's Lucas or something. How young? I don't, no, I don't is it inappropriate he, to no, look at him as a he's, snack? He's not the youngest yeah, one. There's no way. Wrong. I think he's probably older. I actually mid- almost would imagine he's the oldest I one. I think Liam's probably the youngest. Oh, I can't wait for Westworld to come back. Yeah. Never saw that either. Oh, oh, Aaron Paul. I mean, yeah. Well, do you remember when, like, during the game, when we were watching Game of Thrones and we all lost our shit when the Westworld promo came on because we didn't know it was Westworld promo until mm-hmm. the very end? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say it's a perfect show. It has its faults, but it's just like, it's like, oh, very interesting. It's oh, a ride. It's a ride. It's yeah. A ride. It's probably going to burn us in the end. Yeah. Like everything else. Like Game of Thrones. Okay. So, um, I guess, I guess that's enough of us for this week. <laughs> that was, that was pretty disgusting, but, uh, it was, <laughs> you said you like cults. I do. Do you still like cults? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I, I still a little bit want to be in a cult. But not one of these. No, no, no. Not no. one of those ones. Okay. To be, to be clear. To be clear. To be clear. <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> to be fair. So, Justine, where, where can uh, anybody who's listening to this find out a little bit more about us? Oh, my. Well, you can follow us on Instagram, where Heather posts some sick, sick photos. You can follow us on Twitter, where JB posts some sick, sick tweets. Don't follow us on Facebook because we don't do shit there. You can also visit- We got zucked. Oh, yeah. We got zucked. We didn't get zucked. We just don't like Facebook. Uh, we, you can go to our website, uh, thatsickpodcast.com. You can send us emails at that's.sick.podcast at gmail.com. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Tell us your sick, sick stories. And we might share them on the air. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to us in whatever podcasting apparatus you prefer we're on apple Podcasts, spotify all the good ones um and if you like what you hear please rate and review we would really appreciate that i would five stars only yeah five stars only be nice only if it's nice i would love to read a review if you hate us go ahead and tweet about it but that's a five star review if you hate us there's about eight thousand other podcasts to listen to just Just shut the fuck up and move along anyway thank you but thanks for listening and until next week Don't wear a vertebrae necklace because 
That's, That's sick. sick.